Nestled in the rolling hills of north central Texas County sits the Missouri Department of Conservation's George O. White State Forest Nursery. We're here to learn about everything that takes place here. We're in the office, but all the action is outside. Let's go check it out. So Mike, we're actually sitting at the entrance of the Missouri State Department of Conservation's Forestry Nursery. Take me through the beginning of all this and how um, all these growing greens came to be. Well, it actually started in the 1930s by the uh, Forest Service of, of all things. They uh, were looking for a place to start growing some pine trees for the land reclamation that was needing to take place. A lot of our forest hills had been uh, deforested, they were eroding away. And the Forest Service knew if they planted pine, they could get that soil back and, and regain, regain the, uh, the, the land. So George White, a, state for, or a, a U.S. Forest Service employee, was commissioned to find a location. This is the location that he found. It was operated by them until about the 1940s, at which time Missouri Department of Conservation started operating the nursery. So we've actually been here for over 80 years, and the department has operated this for over 70 years. So let's talk about, um, you know, from over 80 years ago, mm -hmm. its conception to 2020. Um, give me the bird's eye view of how it operates and, and who your customers are and its overall purpose. Okay, so we sell seedlings to private and state nurseries uh, all across the United States. We're one of the few nurseries that can actually ship across the United States. So we have a huge responsibility to make sure our seedlings are clean of insects and disease, which we take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole concept is, I mean, we start from some seed to, to, to lifting the seedlings and then packaging and shipping the seedlings as well. Today we're lucked out. The sun is shining, but it's mm -hmm. not 90 to 100 degrees. But we have an entire crew behind you. Take me through your employees, their role. How do, um, how do they make all this happen and how many people does it take to make it happen? Well, in our busy season, we have close to 50 people. This time of year with our office staff and our weeding crew, we have about 20 people. They're standing behind me over here. Um, and so we have three people that work in the office, two that actually oversee the nursery, myself and my manager. We have two uh, technicians that oversee the crew. And then we have, like I said, our salaried staff. And right now we have approximately 10 to 12 uh, part-time hourlies that work here as well. You talked about yourself, you know, your role as the nursery manager. What's your background? Do you just love trees? I do. I also have a four-year degree in uh, forest resource management. I went to Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, Illinois. Uh, I've been here at the department coming up on 30 years now. Well, this is my passion, growing things from seed. That's, that's I can my tell. passion. I can I tell. Well, I'm excited to learn more about that, and we're glad to have you here in the state of Missouri. Let's go see um, all these seedlings that you've got growing behind us. Sounds great. You mentioned varieties earlier. Mm -hmm. So how many different varieties of trees are you growing here at the nursery? Well, we grow anywhere from 65 to 75 different species of trees here. It really depends on the seed that we get in. And that, and that is the, the key to everything. We rely on the general public to bring in seed to us. We do have some contractors that we buy seed from, but for the most part, we buy hundreds of pounds of seeds from the general public. So, so you, you talk about the general public because I think that's fascinating. They're the ones providing you the seed. How yes. does that process take place? We have buying stations up in northern Missouri, in Kirksville, Chillicothe, and St. Joe. And then we have here at our nursery, we're open year round or to, to buy seed. Well, I'm looking behind you. I mm -hmm. see hackberry, tulip poplar, trees that I know very little about. Uh -huh. So who, what's your most popular tree? Actually, uh, the uh, red budwood. Is. The red bud, okay. Yeah, you'd think the white dogwood, or our state tree would be, mm -hmm. but actually red bud is what we grow the most of. So it's late August and you guys are already prepping for fall planting. Correct. Let's head off and see what that prep work looks like. Sounds good. So it looks like a little field prep is taking place. When will seed go into ground here? This will start in the uh, fall of the year. We do plantings both in the fall and the spring of the seed. You can see we start out with the cover crop. We keep all of our ground as covered as best we can. We want to maintain the, the, uh, the good soil in place. We also use, you can see down here further, some uh, soybeans. That's a nitrogen fixer. Okay. So we want to try to put some more nitrogen into the soil that uh, kept, cuts down a little bit on our uh, fertilizing then in the spring. But here, of course, we've got this all dissed up. 
And if you looked at the beds closely, they're actually just four foot wide beds that we actually grow the seedlings in. Uh -huh. This is what's called our bed former. It's one of our bed forms. We actually have two of them. And it makes the, uh, the four foot wide bed. So it's basically like a big garden tiller. So yeah. it shapes our bed and gets it ready. And so you mentioned that uh, soybeans behind us are mm -hmm. a cover crop. Yep. Now I can't help but uh, <laughs> see the beautiful sunflowers that are behind us. Yes. Are they serving the same purpose? They are, as a, both a cover crop, they aren't a nitrogen fixer. That's a block because of some flooding issues that we usually have every year. We don't plant that block yet. Mm -hmm. They are going to be fixing our creek so we can use that. But right now, this is the first time we've tried the sunflower seeds, or the sunflowers, but it's great for the pollinators. There's all kinds of bees and stuff out there. It's incredible. It's attracted a lot of the doves, which the seed starts maturing. They'll be a great area for dove. And the quail will utilize that area as well for the seeds. So how often are you rotating the varieties? We have approximately 50 acres of blocks that we actually plant in. We plant about 25 every year, so each block gets a year to rest. Mm -hmm. but once we're done, it gets dissed up, it gets planted in either to wheat or to uh, soybeans, and it will sit. If it's in soybeans, usually that's the field we're going to be planting that fall or that spring. So this is where all the seed magic happens? Here at the nursery, yes. This is our main seed buying station in the state. So if a customer is here, mm -hmm. they're here to drop off, take me through that process. Okay. So we, uh, every year we put out a list of seeds that we're willing to buy. Mm -hmm. I go through our list of seeds. We try to keep a, like a five year supply of our seeds on hand. So we'll come out with the list of seeds that we are willing to buy and the prices that we're going to pay per pound. And the customers will, will go ahead and bring that in. Just, and, and it has different dates on there. We want to make sure the seed is mature. So they, have to, they can't bring it in before a certain date. And, and we do that to make sure those people don't pick the seed early and bring it in. Some seed will go ahead and ripen after it's picked, but the majority of it will not. So if you pick it too early, you've got a dead seed. This is how we, we buy it, with the, the fruit on. Oh. Now obviously we can't store it this way because mm -hmm. the seed inside would rot because of all the moisture. We also can't plant it this way because it won't go through our machine planters. So we have to clean the pulp off of this. That's what that machine's for. Oh. It's called a macerator. Inside, if you look in it, it looks like a big food processor with the wheel down at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. So we put the seed in it along with the water, turn that on, and our folks that do this every day, there's a certain sound they're listening for. They know when the seed is ready. If they leave it in this for too long, it will actually damage the seed and kill the seed. That makes sense. So when the, they know that sound. So you're, you're, you're agitating it, but also cleaning it and washing it. Correct. Okay. And then out of one side will come all the pulp. Out of this side will come all the seed. And that's what you're going to use Correct. to plant this year. So when it comes out, it's got the water in and the seed. Then we have to lay it on the drying racks to dry before they can process it. So we can go in here and look at okay. that. So once the seed, like the plum, comes out of the macerator, it has to be dried. Are so these we, are plum seeds? Correct. So we lay it on the, the screens. This is fresh out of the uh, macerator. You can see all that pulp is washed completely off of that seed, and this is ready to plant. So during a, the grading time, how mm -hmm. many employees are you actually um, encompassing in here? We have about 12 to 14 people that operate our, our uh, graders in here. So how are they trained? They, uh, of course, a lot of these folks have come here for years. We oh. have one lady that's 94 years old, and if she comes back this year, she'll be here 43 years. Oh my goodness. So our average well, age of our graders, she can. The average age of our graders is about 71 years of age. And what are they looking for? They're looking for four things, stem caliper, tree height, a good crown, and a good root. Now, this time of the year is the perfect time to start planting. Yes. So we're, if I'm going to make a little nursery at home or I need to restock um, some pastures, where can I go to learn more about your services and, and uh, where to buy them? Online and through your magazine? Correct. All right, we start taking orders September 1st of every year. We started that about three years ago. The catalog actually will be inside the September edition of the Missouri Conservationist. September 1st midnight, you can actually go online to mdc.mo.gov, type in seedlings, and you'll get to the order area.